It's reaction time. Today we're reacting to sales training, telling a car salesman that they must not let you, the customer, lead at any time at the dealership. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers. Well, the amazing Elizabeth is here, and we're reacting to one of Andy Elliott's videos stating that a car salesman must lead you around, maybe by the nose, <laughs> and that at no time should a customer ever lead. And they insult the salesman who lets you, the customer, lead. Well, we teach the opposite. Every savvy car buyer leads his or her own car deal. More in a moment. As our loyal followers know, the Homework Guide channel prepares car buyers with homework and research to do before the sale. If you're new here, there are tons of videos you need to see on our channel covering car buying strategies, from how to reduce unnecessary expenses and fees pushed on you in dealer finance, to how to avoid fraud at a car dealership. Show us how smart you are and become one of our savvy followers. Subscribe now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. The Homework Guy is the best car buying advice you can find online. This is actually going to be Andy Elliott's wife today, Jacqueline, that we're going to be uh, reacting to. It's kind of a rambling video in which she repeats herself several times and even contradicts herself. It's kind of funny. She does it several times. Well, all in the effort to tell a car salesman that they can't let you, the customer, lead. Well, let's check out this video. Today I'm going to talk about how to lead your customers instead of them leading you. See, most of the time when people come in, since you do have a re bad reputation, since you are a salesperson, a lot of people come in and they try to... Since you have a bad reputation as a salesman, <laughs> and you know what, you guys, if you ever look at the Gallup polls that pulled the least to worst trusted professions, for 40 straight years, a car salesman has been on the bottom. Yep. So nobody can say the homework guy channel or anybody else who publishes information on the car business. Nobody but the car business itself owns that bad reputation take control of the sale. So if you have a customer, they usually know what it is that they're looking for, or they kind of look around and then you're stuck following them. And that that's not the way you do, you do it. You're not an order taker, you're not a tour guide. You have to- Let's take this order taker. Sure. Is. What's an order taker? An order taker is a salesperson who collects information for a product or service and assists with the purchase. They answer your questions and they give you more information. Well, how about somebody who's a tour guide? Because they love to call people either an order taker or a tour guide in the car business that actually listens to the customer. So sure. what, what's the definition of a tour guide? Well, a tour guide is just an expert that is there to show people around. They show you places of interest and the best guides are very knowledgeable and actually entertaining. So what about being a order taker and tour guide sounds bad to the car buyer? None of that sounds bad. In fact, I have a lot of good memories of good order takers like at a restaurant <laughs> and good tour guides of places I've been. Now, they're very memorable. You give the biggest tips yes. to the greatest order takers who are really good at listening to you and helping you get what you want. And of course, somebody who's very knowledgeable about their stuff and can be a little entertaining as well. So think about that. Those kinds of people, if they existed in the car business, would do a lot better than people who follow the kind of training that Andy Elliott and Mr. Richards and others put out there because all of it's about control type stuff. We'll get into that more in just a little bit. Be a leader. And by being a leader, I mean just show up with the right attitude and you have to really take it like if they're on your turf, they're in your house. So when you have somebody come visit your house and say you have somebody that hasn't seen you for a while and you gotta kind of give them a tour of your house, you have to really understand that they're gonna come in and you're gonna be like, okay, here is the kitchen, make yourself at home, the bathroom, whatever it is that you're doing, but you're leading them and they are following you. Apparently, she doesn't understand the distinction between a tour guide. Now, here's somebody... the tour of my house. <laughs> yeah, here's the tour of my house. <laughs> it's hilarious. See, a lot of us make a big mistake and we conform to what other people are doing. So we have to have a leading attitude. We have to make sure that we don't conform to the way they are. So we have somebody that's going to come in and they're going to be kind of turned down because they're not going to want to be at the dealership. They, I mean, we have a bad reputation and a Spot lot of people on. don't, I mean, they'd rather go to the dentist than actually deal with the salesman. I mean, that's what all the statistics show. I I'm surprised at her frankness and honesty about this. Nobody likes going to a car dealership. And a big part of it is because of what she's training here. Yes. Yeah. So if you actually did run into somebody who fell under the definition of an order taker or somebody who's like a tour guide, you'd actually enjoy that experience. And well, you'd want to go back next time you need a car because you want to avoid back. everything else. Yeah. You know what? I actually excelled in these two categories 
And not only did I have tons of repeat customers, but tons of people who brought back uh, friends and family and others to buy cars for me too. And, and you know what? I don't know if you remember this, but all, all these people who brought gift cards and gifts and things that were dropped off on my desk all the time, some of them were really, really substantial. Um, I remember something that was in that $500 range some, somewhere that somebody just so appreciated uh, the help that they got that they actually came back to the dealership and paid me an extra bonus for helping them. So you know what? Um, there's, there's actually great returns to any of you who are salespeople who watched this video and thought you have to lead your customer and you listened to other people in the dealership who said being an order taker or a tour guide was an insult. Well, actually using that kind of mindset is how you can grow a phenomenal big business in the car business. So you really have to change that mold. You have to be a leader and lead with great attitude. But not only that, you have to really understand that this is your turf. This is a place that they're coming into. This is your home. So you have to treat it as that. So you have to basically lead them and show them that you care by asking them the right questions. You don't want to be an order taker. You don't want to be a tour guide. Oh, no. You, you know, they're there for a reason. They're there because they because that would actually be customer service. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and don't want to be customer service. And, and you know, the proof to anybody who wonders, because customer service is actually a relationship that starts before the sale, goes through the sale, and Continues. well after the sale. Yeah. So think about any business that you do business with on a typical basis. You go back to businesses that provide customer service, and customer service is kind of like a, a, a lifelong promise that a business or a brand gives you and that's the reason why you continue to do business with them because you know if there's something wrong you can go back to fix it well you know what proof that there's no customer service at a car dealership is just go back there after you bought your car and yeah. they don't know who what your name is and what you're doing there and if you have a problem you want resolved there's nobody around to help you and even your own salesman uh who the heck are you yeah, yeah. no customer service whatsoever they need something from you that you can offer them and you can fulfill their needs. So a lot of times, you know, when I sold, I, I used the walking backwards type of thing. So when you're talking to your customers and you're asking them those qualifying questions when they come in, you want to make sure as you're walking at the vehicle, don't have that dead silence where they're just following your back and you're just walking or where you're following them. That's like the worst mistake. So one of the things that you have to practice is walking backwards. As you're talking to your customer, you, you're like kind of asking them guy. questions and yeah. you're learning and you're walking, you're still looking at them, but you're walking backwards. So I felt that that really helped me because you still had that connection with your buyers and you still got to see their faces as you're walking toward the vehicle that they're wanting to see or that you're trying to, you know, show them or in the vicinity of what, what they're asking and you're trying to discover their needs and wants and trying to fulfill because this is going to be the fulfillment stage once you're walking to your vehicles. Learn to walk backwards and keep that constant communication with them because it makes a big, big difference. So you have to understand that you are in the lead. Do not follow your customers. If you do follow your customers. I guarantee you, you're not going to lead them into the sale. You're not going to lead them into the next step. And they want to feel like they're dealing with a true professional. You know, so what's that's interesting, Kevin, is I don't think you need to walk backwards. Like what is wrong with like walking right next to someone? I mean, mm -hmm. I get it from like a theater standpoint. You don't turn your back on your audience, but what's wrong with just having a friend next to you instead of like having to draw them along with what you're saying? But what's funny is all of these actions she's describing are the actions of a tour guide. Yeah. Have you ever been on a tour? <laughs> yes. The, the tour guy the whole time is explaining stuff that's going on. They don't turn their back on you. They're, they're doing everything that she's describing. And yet it's hilarious that she tells the sales audience that you don't want to be a tour guide. It's all of them think it's a great sign of weakness if the car salesman shows any evidence of customer service. Sure. One thing that you have to practice, practice walking backwards. Practice leading your customers. Stay engaged. Don't leave awkward silence at all throughout the process because if... And if you can do the moonwalk, that's especially <laughs> Even <better>. nice. Yeah. <laughs> If you do, then that's the time that they're going to doubt themselves. That's the time when all the stuff is going to come in, the objections and everything else. So try to uh, be talkative. Try to keep asking them questions about their family and everything. Sometimes we do the, the meet and greet, fact, find, qualify, where we're getting on the discovery of the thing. And then we, we kind of just stop right there. And then we get keys. And then we discovery have them follow the us. Thing. And then we don't even turn back. Sometimes I see salesmen leaving their customers way far behind. If they have kids, make sure that 
that we, you know, wait for the kids so that they're all together and we're talking to them in the meantime. If you see a kid's shoe untied, stop and tie the kid's shoe. I promise you that it really, really helps. I mean, bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> Some stranger, especially a car salesman, turns around and touches one of my kids and they're probably going to get some broken fingers yeah yeah bad idea do not be touching your customers kids I, i've seen a few salespeople in dealerships actually do that oh, yeah? because they're like hey here's a sucker and here's a this and whatever else and put their hands on the child and whatever else it's freaking creepy it's like a creep mode yeah yes do not do that kind of stuff bad advice I mean, I'm just saying, you have to care, you have to show them that you care, but also lead them. And you always have to make sure that you ask the right questions so that's going, that are gonna basically open up your sales. So don't just ask fluff questions that are not gonna advance your sale or move it forward. Andy always talks about moving your sale forward. So everything that you ask is going to lead on to that. But don't leave that awkward silence. Don't follow your customers. Be a leader. Don't Treat it as if it's your turf, it's your house. And don't ask your customer how you can help them. Don't ask your customer what their real needs are. Right. Don't ask them any questions that have yes or no answers because then, you know, your customer will start leading right away. So, so yeah. should we tell everybody what a salesperson actually is? Yeah, why don't we? As go, go ahead, Liz. What Google? actually is a salesperson? A salesperson is a person who uses persuasion and influence to increase the money spent and products purchased that the business wants to sell. That the business wants That the wants business to sell. wants, yeah. Now, that's not, a, that's not a huge problem, but you have to remember that they're, they wanna sell what the business wants to sell. So they're gonna use all those powers of persuasion and influence to get you to spend more money and take more products that the business wants to sell. Yeah. Now, if you just look at a couple of different uh, business models that are out there, uh, what if there's a t-shirt shop and you walk in there and you go, I want a hat. They don't have hats. They wanna sell you a t-shirt, right? Or, or what if you go to an ice cream shop and what you're looking for is a burger and they happen to just be an ice cream shop. They'll sell you an ice cream cone they're not going to try to sell you a burger. They're, they're going to sell you what the business itself wants to sell. So you have to remember that every time you go into the car dealership, whatever those discussions are that they've had in the back sales room about all the products and the fees and the warranties, and that's all stuff they want to sell. Th there's a reason why they're pushing you in that direction. And there's a reason why they're not really focused very much on your needs because the salesman is focused on what the business itself wants to sell. And, you know, make them feel welcome, overload them with, you know, that, that care in that, you know, welcome feeling that they come in, overwhelm them with kindness. You know, they came to see you. They went to probably kindness. two or three other. Don't be an order taker or a tour guide, but overwhelm them with kindness. Yeah. Yeah. If it, only it were genuine, you know. Yeah. Ignore all their needs and don't, don't do any of the things that you would normally equate with good customer service dealerships before you have to be different you have to be kind you have to show them that you care and you have to walk with them and hold their hand during the process and part of that is not walking giving you giving them your back or you following them trying to chase them because they're leading the sale so one one tip that's funny liz how often is the salesman following you when you go to a dealership how often are they <laughs> like back there in the rear view mirror following you you know, honestly, a lot of times they just give me the key and say it's over there because they don't even want to come with me. So <laughs> yeah, they're so unfamiliar with being led that they pretty much go, OK, here, here you go. Have fun. Yep. Enjoy yourself. We're going to stop her right here because she's not adding any value to this no. whole thing. It's just a repeat of the lead, you know, your house, you know, all that kind of stuff. So let's just take a couple of uh, things, because for those of you in our viewing audience, if you want to look some of this stuff up, and actually understand, or, or maybe you're in the sales field already, and you'd understand exactly where we're coming from. So there are what are, are known as essential sales skills. Yes. So something that tops the list is communication. So being a good, effective communicator and communicating straight, factual, upfront kind of information. So not just pumping people full of BS. And then the next one would be discovery. So having the ability to understand what somebody's needs are you know what they're looking for another one would be active listening mm -hmm. so not just active listening is well beyond just well i hear what you said active listening is bouncing something back to somebody and said so when you said blue are you talking about a navy blue or a light blue or where where are we at on that color or when you said good gas mileage are you looking for something that gets like 35 40 miles per gallon or you know it's an suv so you're just hoping that it gets over 20 miles per gallon you qualify that kind of stuff so that's what discovery about or active listening is about 
And then, of course, good presentation skills fall into essential sales skills. How about business acumen and some ethics that go along with business acumen? But a good salesman will understand his business, the, the financials of his business, and re really be able to present the nuts and bolts of what the company is doing. Another uh, key one would be negotiation. So if we could go ahead and put all those here on the screen, negotiation. Also time management and, and planning for time. So sure. it, it's, it's one of the things that in the car dealership, a lot of salespeople, the managers, all of them like really, really suck at it. That's why you end up, you know, two, three, four hours. Some and people you're starving say, and you're hungry and tired. You just can't wait to get out of there. We just put a video out that showed one of the tactics of the dealership was the time wasting strategy. So yeah, they, they do the complete off, uh, opposite of that. And then the other part is like attentiveness. If a customer tells a salesman already a few times, like, no, I'm not ready to do this. I need to think about it. Pay attention to what the customer is actually saying and validate that stuff. Instead of always thinking about it, I need to overcome, I need to overcome, I need to overcome. You've heard like three or four no's already. Just say, hey, clearly, this isn't something you're ready to do today. Let me help you out with some of the homework that you want to do. So find out what their concerns were and what they want to go home and think about and, and suggest that they go talk to their own bank or credit union. Suggest that they have others you know, evaluate their trade. Suggest yes. that they fair market value the, the vehicle. If all those things are so great at your dealership, you should never, ever fear a customer actually doing that homework. So now... Here were the list of the essential skills, and there's others, but here are the essential sales skills. Now think about what a car dealership focuses on with their training. So what are the things that, that a, a car dealership will tell their car salesman that they need to focus on, Liz? Well, first they tell stories to get you to believe certain pieces of information. So let's say I had a tire warranty <laughs> and oh man, the roads in this state are horrible and it saved me thousands of dollars and I'd have to pay for these tires because they're under warranty. I had three flats in the space of 15 minutes and I know <laughs> a guy who rolled his car and yeah, they're just like BS stories. So storytelling yes. is one of the things they focus on a lot in their training. What else? Yes. And Andy Elliott especially talks about objection handling. Yes. Objection handling. Correct. You, you know what's interesting about that, Liz? I almost never, with all the cars that I sold, I almost never had to go into that so-called process of objection handling because I was there to help the customer resolve what their issue was. Yep. I didn't have to um, handle any objections at all. And people would come back to the dealership with folders full of information ready to buy a car because they'd done all their homework. So I didn't have to focus on any objection handling at all. A lot of people would ask me, you know, Kevin, how did you handle this problem or that problem or that problem? I was like, I didn't. I took care of my customer from beginning to end and I never had any objections. Right. Well, you weren't trying to cram someone through the process today because you weren't worried about losing them. They were going to come back because you took good care of them. All right. So storytelling, objection handling. And prospecting. How prospecting. can you get everybody in your in, in your influence to come buy a car from you? Your mom, your brother, your <laughs> sister, your family. like they hound you to get out there and everybody you know, get them into the dealership. Yep, they talk about territory management as in, I talked to that guy once three years ago, he's my customer. <laughs> yes. How's that even possible? Car salespeople fight over that all the time. Yep, and the last three kind of go together, persuasion, influence, and controlling your customer. Yeah, so put all that emphasis on those things. Watch any videos on Andy Elliott and it's all around persuasion, uh, influence, control, enthusiasm. It's all that kind of stuff. Yep. So you're never going to hear him talk about um, active listening, about the art of communication, about business acumen, about being truthful and honest with people. That's not going to happen. Nope. So very interesting stuff. So here in conclusion, because we mentioned customer service a few times, I want to share with people, you guys can look up your own definitions of this, but customer service is really support given to the customer. Yes before, before during and after the sale. I mentioned that in the early part of this. Before, during and after the sale to make it an easy and enjoyable experience. So when folks like Andy Elliott said he's going to give you world-class customer service, was it easy and enjoyable? And eh. did he know your name before, during and after the sale and did you feel just as comfortable going back to get a problem resolved as you did the day you started thinking about buying a car? What was the customer service level uh, still the same? And pretty much with any dealership anywhere, the answer is no. So talking about customer service, 
Liz, what would actually define good customer service? Because we've shared a few different points with people. What would actually be the definition of good customer service? You're working with someone who is a good communicator. They're good at listening to you. They have good presentation skills. And they're good at negotiating and managing your time and theirs. And they're very attentive to you. Interestingly enough, you guys, remember that list we put together about the essential sales skills? That type of salesperson is actually somebody who understands good customer service. Yep. So really interesting, but become that salesperson and you'll become number one in your dealership and customers from all around the country will flock to see you. I, I think my furthest customer came from probably six states away uh, to come buy a car for me. It's not that hard. And you'll get people from all around the country to come buy vehicles from you when you actually really do uh, understand customer service. When you're willing to be an order taker, when you're a great tour guide and you provide all of that experience so that it's easy and it's enjoyable, well, your customers just vomit information on you and you sell cars like crazy. Yep. So just ignore all this nonsense from the Elliott camp and go lead for you car buyers. Go lead on your next car deal. Yep. Stay in control and you come out a winner every time. All right. If you appreciate our video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up. And remember to always comment below on our videos. Comment down below. Comments really matter because they boost the search algorithms and the content is easier to find for others too. Add hashtag the homework guide to your comment. And if you're on other platforms, look for us out there. There's a list of options here on the screen and they're linked in the description box below. If you're new here, make sure you check out all the other videos we have. We've reached over 45 million people and you might as well benefit from our great content too. And if you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box down below. And special thanks to everybody who does that. It's really awesome, you guys. Yes. But no problem if you can't do a tip. The best way to help us out is share this video with your family and friends because then they can get just as lucky as you and encourage everyone to subscribe and ring that bell too because ding, 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 ding. ding you don't miss a thing. Well, the entire Homer Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, we do an exceptional job of it because that's what we do every single day. Well, thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter here with the amazing Elizabeth. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.